Hey everybody, it's Master Gallengeist here, bringing you my review for Eternals Issue 5. And this was a pretty good issue because we, we're still learning more about how the kind of Eternals take and everything, and all the different kind of factions going on, and it's really kind of cool because I really like how there's a lot of lore behind the Eternals, and this is interweaving it as much as possible while presenting it in ways that don't, like, just, like, info dump on you. It's like, okay, this is who we're talking about, and then kind of gives you a page to kind of, like, dig into it a little bit, and then continue on with the action. That's a very fine balance to do. So we start off, and we see that the planet is still going kind of crazy, and we see that Cersei is pretty much doing a kind of checkup thing with Tony Stark. And... The thing is, she starts making it seem like her and Thanos are working together. And uh, the thing is, she start, she uh, utilizes her powers to pretty much uh, pause Tony Stark's uh, nervous system, pretty much. And starts kind of gloating and everything. And then we see this person come out of nowhere. This is the Forgotten One slash Gilgamesh. And we, of course, after everything's kind of like running through, get a kind of run down. He's called the Forgotten One. He pretty much takes it upon himself and the rest of the Forgotten, which is like three main others, uh, to pretty much stop the Eternals from screwing over humanity completely. Now, granted, there's kind of like the differences of opinion of how that's going on, where uh, like the humans would kind of think of him as a Robin Hood for them, whereas the Eternals think of him more as like a Punisher because of how extreme he goes and doing all these things. So he's pretty much got Cersei and is like, trying to like kill her ass but then of course Icarus comes out of nowhere and of course the machine's like talking about like hey he doesn't give a shit about Windows because he can see through walls and pretty much takes it in takes it to Gilgamesh so she pretty uh Cersei then deals with Tony Stark pretty much uh, rewriting his memory talking to him about how it was pretty much just a plot ploy and removing any kind of reference to Thanos uh because she doesn't want them to kind of know that Thanos was there at all and then she pretty much goes to kind of like deal with what's going on. We see that Icarus tries to, to get uh, Gilgamesh to surrender, barely even gets the word surrender out before he's like, do you think I'd surrender? He's like, no. And they start like cracking at each other. But um, Thana and uh, Kingo are able to pop up and kind of like lock him down. And they're pretty much like interrogating him to figure out what's going on. Now, he's pretty much the one that's been involved mainly with the shutdown of the Resurrection thing. We also get a kind of rundown of like what the Exclusion Zone details with, of course, the Resurrection thing. They're kind of holding cell and the kind of engine thing that's going on with the Great Machine. We also get a nice kind of Star Trek slash uh, Deep Space Nine reference in there. So I was like, by the Great Machine. So it's like, oh, that's actually pretty cool. But uh, to Gilgamesh, death, it, he wanted to make it more of a punishment uh, for the Eternals because they just cavalierly was like, oh, I'll die and I'll come back. And, and that is an interesting way to look at it because what happens if death is not that much of a barrier? Yeah, depending upon how long of a time it is before you come back, kind of like a reincarnation cycle, resurrection cycle, uh, if it's pretty instantaneous, similar to like like uh, what's been going on with the Eternals, what's been going on in the X-Men and uh, uh, with their whole resurrection thing how does that affect what choices you do are you more reckless are you more willing to sacrifice yourself uh, do you just not give a shit and be like hey, if I die I don't give a shit and then just do the kind of like horrendous things that you would want to do that is an important thing and of course Gilgamesh has gone like you know what Eternals fuck with humans death needs to be a punishment so uh, having it be a kind of longer time is an interesting tactic for him to take. But the thing is, he's not a scientist or a technician, so he's he's essentially looked at like certain kind of like technological aspects and was like hitting like some points for like twenty thousand like years or whatnot. I was like, Jesus Christ! But they pretty much are figuring out what's going on. It's like, hey, the thing is, one of the directives protect the machine. I don't believe it's him doing it. And of course, uh, with everything that's going on, we also see the rest of the Forgotten kind of jump up into the effect and have like them on uh, uh, in their sights. And that's pretty important because uh, they can't resurrect at this point. And they kind of need to suss out a situation to make sure it all kind of works out. 
and we see that he's like why aren't they trained on me he's like uh, if it comes down to it me yoga mission take your ass out he's like listen I don't have that I got the duty to protect Toby Robinson so let's kind of get to this like, alright cool now let me show you why you should believe me for certain things we had also gotten a, a, a check in on Thanos and uh, Droog and we learned that Thanos is being controlled by some kind of benefactor person uh, like his heart he has to follow what's going on He's, somebody's got a leash on him like he remembers that he was in the black hole screaming talking about his screams are beneath him like screams are for others not Thanos and Drug of course is trying to work his way in he's like dude I got betrayed by Mephisto your shit ain't working on me he's like well let's kind of like fuck with this traitor dude and we're trying to figure out who this would be so we also check in on Sprite and Toby and uh Sprite's just shooting the shit with him he's like yeah I'll protect you and everything and then also going on with what's going on with Icarus and all that of course Toby's afraid of dying and everything but he's like uh Sprite's like eh don't worry, you'll live a long life before you die. Icarus will contend to that. And then Toby's like, well, because he's thinking about death and ruminating on that. He's like, well, how many people have you killed? Oh, oodles. And just, it's interesting how if you say you've killed one person, that seems sometimes uh, more horrendous than if somebody says that they killed a number that people can barely kind of grasp. It's always interesting to see how people kind of like talk about that kind of thing. Well, we had also seen them checking in on uh, Fastus and how his whole thing is to, like, kind of protect the machine and all that. And he's trying to, like, finagle it to working out correctly. Well, uh, that kind of starts lining up. They get into the exclusion zone. Gungamus is like, yeah, I, this would be the spot to kind of, like, fuck with everything going on. And he's like, well, I wouldn't do it. Uh, but, oh, this is where I showed Fastus that it would. It looks sabotage, and everybody's like, what the fuck? is going on. Fastus is the one doing it? And we, uh, of course, see that they're trying to, like, go there. Gilgamesh opens up a portal because we've seen that, like, Thanos is using it in the way that the Forgotten have been using it. The Forgotten were taught by Fastus, and they tried to get in contact with him, but they really couldn't. They try and work their way towards Fastus, but they... Gilgamesh goes through first before the others are following, and we see Thanos lying in wait. We see Fastus like, no, I'm just trying to destroy the Eternals, not the machine and everything. Everything should be working out all right. And it's like he's bleeding and like coughing up things going on. It's like, why is he wanting to destroy this? And the Great Machine's like, yeah, uh, he's usually a hammer or kind of like someone that like fixes kind of things. But in this case, he's wrong as the machine's talking to us. Like, shit, that's not good that he's started this thing up. So it'll be interesting to see why he has started on this course and everything. How uh, the Eternals that we have been following with Icarus and the gang uh, deal with uh, Thanos. Uh, what kind of objectives that, like, Gilgamesh being thrown into the mix will kind of, like, hammer out if he, like, sees an opportunity to do something, and why Bastos is actually doing this. It's, I really like what's going on here because we've got all these different players. We've got Droog in the mix trying to do what he's trying to do. Thanos is, like, in a pretty compromised position that we usually don't find him in, and Bastos doing this, that he's trying to destroy the Eternals. It's really kind of weird. It's, we'll have to see why he's doing it. And I'm always intrigued to see how that kind of will play out. And I just love the art style that's going on with here. Like Tony's face in the beginning, uh, like him getting his central nervous system mucked with, the action scenes of Icarus versus Gilgamesh showing rightfully an epic clash before we like see all the different kind of stuff in like the reality loom as fast as it's trying to like fix it while also keep it in a state that would pretty much take out the Eternals, I think. So... I'm just excited to see where this is going to be going and what kind of interesting, awesome art that we'll see with, like, action set pieces and just, like, even still pieces where they're, like, talking about shit. So those are my opinions on the issue. Tell me what you guys think in the comments below. If you liked it, if you didn't like it, if you agree with me, if you disagree with me, also like and subscribe, and I hope you have a good day.